Someone left a comment and said that I should check out the Atari Punk console. I started looking into it, and not only was it a simple synth to make, I found that it had a really cool history. The Atari Punk console was created by Forrest Mims back in 1980. It was called the Sound Synthesizer, and it was published in a Radio Shack book called Engineer's Notebook, The Integrated Circuit. About four years later, they republished it in Engineer's Mini Notebook, which I happen to find. They renamed it Step Tone Generator and added a 5K pot to the end. Being in multiple Radio Shack notebooks and being so easy to make what made it a great little project synth for kids and you know people learning to build electronics in the early 80s. But up until 2000, this really didn't see the light of day. The synth really didn't start to make a comeback until the early 2000s with the rise of chip music, circuit bending, noise scene in general. And in 2005, a company called Caustic Machines took the original diagram, and they tweaked it slightly, and renamed it to the Atari Punk Console. And the rest is basically history. Since it was so simple, a lot of people really just took to creating really amazing boxes. There's even been a VST audio plugin made about this little synthesizer. The concept of the little synth is pretty simple. There are two timers running in conjunction with each other. The first is basically a square wave oscillator running constantly, you know, a constant sound. And from what I, I've learned, the timer is running in an A-stable state. Basically, an A-stable circuit is one that is not stable, and it is constantly going back and forth between two different states, creating a square wave. The second timer, which is in a monostable state, creates the pulses or steps that you hear when you move the second pot around. Originally, this was this used a 556 timer chip. I'm using two 555 chips. It's essentially the exact same concept. Here, tell you what, let me draw that out for you. Okay, so, so you see that there are two 555 chips. The, the, there was a couple of other changes that I made to the diagram. I replaced the first 500K potentiometer with a 50K. Why did I do that? And the second potentiometer, which is also a 500K, I replaced with a 100K. I also replaced the 0.01 microfarad cap with a 0.1. The reason I changed these is mainly out of just, I and have the other components. I'm not gonna solder this all together. I'm just gonna build it on, on the breadboard. And if you wanna know how a breadboard works, check out my other video. I'll link it below. One cool thing I ordered though was a set of jumper wires. When we're building it on the breadboard, it should be a little bit cleaner looking. So anyway, Let's start building this thing. I know I have the overhead cam. I think, 
think it'll be easier just to show you here. What do you think? All right, here's the circuit. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're gonna add some, gonna add the power. The other thing that I forgot to mention, this is the first time I've actually built anything using schematics. So if I do get anything wrong, let me know. And again, for anyone that has already seen some of my videos, I am a complete beginner at electronics. And of course, I know that I'm going to make mistakes. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw the two 555 chips right on here. We're gonna give these guys power here. And on the other side, at number one, can you give that negative power? Okay, so now that the, the chip now has power to it, we're gonna add in the potentiometers. Now, this is where the original diagram and the one that I the, the one that I copied, which I'll link below, is says is looking for a 500 k potentiometer. I'm gonna switch off the for the one on the first chip to a 50 k. And the one in the second with a 100K. All right, so let's check this out. Okay, so I'm gonna add the 50K potentiometer to the seventh pin, and then the 100K potentiometer to the seventh pin on the second chip. In the diagram, on the first chip, we're gonna take the seventh pin and bring it down to the six pin using a using a 1K resistor. Okay, so like I was mentioning in the, the, the other video, we're gonna use capacitors to kind of create a high pass filter on the sound. Now, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna install these up towards the top and use jumpers to connect them to where they need to go, but, but they are in, they're going to be in there. It's, the reason why is because these, these, the legs on these are so short that the, it, it doesn't actually, re it, it barely reaches the ground. So I'm just gonna use a jumper, extend the legs. Here, let me, let me show you what I'm doing here. I added in a cap up here and it's connected to the, it's connected to the ground over here. I'm gonna do the same exact thing over here for the second chip. And that's gonna be connected also to the ground. There you go. Now this six pin over here where the resistor jumped from the seventh to the six, that needs to be connected over to the capacitor here. So we'll just run from the six pin We'll run that up to the capacitor. So right here, this six pin coming out here, it's going up to this number five line and being drained out into the ground. Now the other thing is we need to connect four to the power. This is where we start connecting the two 555 chips. So basically what you're doing is you're connecting the out on the first chip to the trigger on the second chip. And since we're talking about it being A stable, that's gonna basically just be a constant square wave going directly into the second chip. Okay, so now what we need to do, on the first chip, we had to or run a capacitor from seven to six. Now, on the second chip, we're removing the resistor and just putting a, a straight wire. So we're basically just connecting the discharge and the threshold to each other. And there's nothing, no resistance in between. It's just a straight wire. And then that threshold will then be connected to the 0.01 cap. I notice I, I made a mistake in the going back. Uh, we're not connecting anything to a 0.01 cap. We're, we're only using 0.1. I actually don't have 0.01 caps, so I'm just using just 0.1.
Our next step here is we're gonna be connecting the output. And like I did with the first capacitor, I'm going to, we have the ground of the jack going directly to the ground. And the other side running through a 10 unifarad capacitor. And that's gonna be connecting to pin number three. Okay, so that should be it. It's super simple, it's super basic. Um, really all that we need to do is plug it into a speaker. Got that there. And just give it power. And there's no switch, so we're just gonna start hearing sound. Let's see if these pots work. Now this this pot that I'm playing with, this is the 100K, and this is on the second chip. And this is the 50K running off of the first chip. It does sound like Atari. Alright, so there you have it. A really simple synth that sounds really cool. Now, there's one thing that I wanted to try. Um, while I was rewriting out the diagram or the schematics, I was thinking, what if I put one meg pots instead of the 50 and 100K? So we got two one meg potentiometers. So that, let's see, the first one that's gonna go into, second one is gonna go into from the power to seven on the, not hearing anything. Ooh, that's not. Hmm, doesn't really sound that great. I'm gonna put 100K, or uh, yeah, 100K on the top one and keep the one meg on the sound from here. Oh, there it is. It definitely sounded better with the lower potentiometers in there. So there you go. There's a really, 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 really simple synth that you can make. And on, like, if you do it on a breadboard under 20 minutes, if you're soldering it, man, then maybe an hour. I don't know. I'm horrible at soldering. So <laughs> that will probably be a later episode. So on that note, I'll let you get going. Have a great morning.